I mean, look, for a meaningless game where the better team on the field today clearly won the football game, I have a lot to say. And uh, look, am I angry that we lost this game? Yes. Does it help us in terms of the draft order? Yes. There were teams today like the Browns, like the Patriots, who won games that they probably shouldn't have, which now put us firmly in the mix for a top five pick. And with the Bengals coming up next week, you have to assume that that's another game we're going to lose. And yes, it's very frustrating, and we could have beaten the Chiefs, and it would have been very, very nice. But I think I've actually pinpointed the exact reason, other than not having a quarterback. We all know this. Gardner Minshew is not very good. I'll talk about him in a second in this game because I think there are some things to talk about with him specifically. But I think I figured out the reason why these games feel so close yet so far away, completely disjointed from the first few drives on offense to the last few, why the defense sometimes looks like the 85 Bears and sometimes completely crumbles and falls apart. And it has to do with coaching. Not just Luke Getze, because I'll get to Luke Getze too, but Patrick Graham and Antonio Pierce. This team, effort-wise and schematically, is consistently prepared to play. The first few drives look good. They have a plan. It's scripted. They execute. But as the game goes on, And these coaches now have to go up against Andy Reid, Steve Spagnola, cream of the crop at their position, coaching-wise. It completely falls apart schematically. And I've got multiple examples of this that I'm going to get into right now. Here's a few things I want to tell you. Number one, I do a 30-minute long live stream breakdown of each game recap on Bleacher Report. So download Bleacher Report, follow me on there, Rodney with an I love board, and you'll see me tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern. (laughs) Also, on Patreon, I've started a new series where I'm breaking down each quarterback prospect in the upcoming draft. I just did Cam Ward. That's a Patreon-exclusive series. It's not going on YouTube because of the copyright infringement. Here's a sneak preview. This feels like it's going to be one. Like that. That right there. That's what I want to see. Guy kind of in his face, steps up throws a laser beam between two people. This, 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 these are the highlights I want to see. Stay in the pocket. There you go. There's the touch. Okay. See, like that, that's going to be – that's that's NFL Open right there. I don't hate what I'm seeing so far, guys. If you want to see videos like that, plus get all my videos early, ad-free, and get your name at the end of the credits, follow the link in the description below or go to patreon.com slash allaboardraises and sign up for the $5 tier. It's $5 a month. It's like a YouTube membership, but Patreon takes out much less percentage, which is why I do Patreon instead of YouTube memberships. Okay. Here's a few examples of how Luke Getze, Antonio Pierce, and Patrick Graham completely crumble under the lights of having to make in-game adjustments, specifically in this game. We have a chance to double dip the defending Super Bowl two-time champions. What do I mean by double dip? Score right before half, get the ball, score again. Double dip. Multiple offensive possessions in the row. We get the ball back with one timeout and around two minutes to go. It was just under two minutes because there was no two-minute warning. And Luke Getze calls shovel pass and then run. Drains the clock out. And then we throw an incomplete pass on a long third down. It does not matter if you don't trust Gardner Minshew to make the right throws in these big spots. You have to play, like Herman Edwards said, to win the game. And the idea that instead of double dipping, we go three and out, the Chiefs now get the ball back, go right down the field, kick a field goal, and then go three and out to start the next series coming out of half. Yes, that's 100% on Luke Getze for calling bad plays, but it's also on Antonio Pierce for not telling Luke Getze, demanding, no matter what, we are passing this football to score a touchdown or a field goal because we need to score on this drive going into half to double dip. That is how you beat the Kansas City Chiefs. What did we do last year to beat them? Scored two defensive touchdowns on back-to-back plays. You have to take advantage when the Chiefs, and they always do, give you the chance to do so. And yes, the play calling was terrible. Two run plays in a row because they don't trust Gardner Minshew, who up until that point was in 10 for 11 with a touchdown. 
Maybe trust him for this moment in the game. And if it blows up in your face, well, guess what? Then everyone's yelling at Gardner Minshew and not Luke Getze. But I want to make it very clear. It's on Antonio Pierce at this point, if he doesn't think Luke Getzey's making the right play calls, to get in his ear and tell him in that moment it must be passes. And also, please make sure we're hitting that sub button. We're so close to 11,000. We're about halfway there. And it would just, you know, make me feel just a little bit better on days like this if I saw the sub count just go up and up and up. And you know, about 65% of you who continue to watch these videos are not yet subscribed. So hit that sub button. It don't hurt nobody. And he didn't. And inexplicably, right before we got the ball, right before the two-minute warning, or right after the two-minute warning, when it's third down and goal for the Chiefs at the six-yard line, we burn a timeout to get the defense in the right position. And I'm thinking, well, this better work. They better not score. Mahomes hikes the ball, and not even two seconds later is Travis Kelsey celebrating in the end zone. Good timeout, AP. Time and time again, he showed me that when he needs to be at a higher level schematically, he's failing to do so. It goes back to his interim year. And I thought having more head coaches around him, he was going to get better at this. And he's gotten better at some aspects, but in some aspects like this in particular, it stayed the same if not got worse. And that's bad coaching. There's instances on third down defense. You know, we have one of the best third down defenses in the league. Except when we're playing the Kansas City Chiefs. There are multiple times Patrick Mahomes scrambled for first downs when guys who were guarding receivers came off the receivers to come tackle him when there were spies right next to them that were going to make the play on Mahomes. That's bad coaching by Patrick Graham. They need to prove, they need to instill discipline into the guys on the outside to not run after Mahomes before he crosses the line of scrimmage when we call spies. And the one time we got him into a third and 12 at the 50-yard line when we desperately needed the ball back, there was no spy in sight, and Mahomes, when we rushed five guys, scrambled outside the pocket and got a first down. That's bad in-game adjustment coaching on Patrick Graham. And last but not least, uh, actually last and least, I've been giving this man the benefit of the doubt <clears throat> because it's, we're, we're, it's a new system and it's, an, it's, it's a new group of players and it takes time for the offense to gel and the offensive line hasn't been great and we've lost Devontae Adams. Shout out to the Jets, lose another game, thank you. And time and time and again, I've been watching the film and I've been going, some of these plays are working. These are not terrible play calls. This was by far Luke Getze's worst game. I feel like I've now seen the light of everybody else complaining about this guy. And you guys weren't wrong to complain about him. I just wanted to give him a chance. And today I saw time and time and again, second down, run, second down, run. The Kansas City Chiefs are putting nine guys in the box because they know Gardner Minshew is not going to beat them with his arm. However, early in the game, Gardner Minshew was managing the game well enough to keep us in it, passing the ball without us having any run game at all. And Luke Getze refused to get out of his rigid run style of offense, which he did a little bit when we played the Browns. Instead, he completely put his head to the wall, smashing it up and up again, up the middle. Alexander Madison, nothing. Samir White, nothing. And when we picked off Mahomes and Trayvon Merrick had the ball in his hands, I was screaming, you need to get in the end zone. Because this happened, I think, against the Steelers, one of the teams that we played recently, where we picked the guy off, got tackled at the three or four yard line, didn't get in the end zone. And this time, we didn't score at all because we went run, run, run. Apparently, there was a package in place for Desmond Ritter. Why not put him in the game there and have a little read option going? Why not throw the ball to Brock Bowers one-on-one -on -one who cannot be guarded by anybody? But instead, it's run, 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 and then we go for it on fourth down, but the play call takes too long to get in there. AP doesn't burn a timeout for whatever reason. It didn't matter because we didn't have any timeouts at the end of the game to stop the clock. He doesn't burn a timeout. Now it's an obvious pass, and they're going to pin their ears back and go get him. 
Instead of calling a timeout, regrouping, we run the play, we get sacked on fourth down. Luke Getze is a bad offensive coordinator. Oh, offensive line's not great. Quarterback plays bad. You're a bad offensive coordinator. You script a great 15 plays to start the game, and then you just do... I, I can't believe the Jacoby Myers shovel, shovel pass. I can't believe that play call. What are you doing calling a, 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 a whoopsie-doo trick play when we're in two-minute offense? A play that can get easily blown up by Chris Jones, which is exactly what happened. You're a bad offensive coordinator, and I want you gone. Gone, like tomorrow. Doesn't matter anymore. Give it to anybody else. Give it to anybody else. Edgar Bennett, get ready to call plays because I'm done with Getsy. As far as Gardner Minshew was concerned, you know, I, I thought he was okay. Uh, I've been the biggest Gardner Minshew critic in, this, in the YouTube Raider space, no doubt about it. He was fine. Borderline decent. He managed the game. And because he did not turn the ball over, we had a chance late. That's why I was banging the drum for Aiden because he has less tendency to turn the ball over. And Minshew, you know, he took a sack every now and again. He threw the ball away. He was making some good plays. And because he didn't turn the ball over and because our defense plays hard for AP and for Patrick Graham, we were down seven with eight minutes to go. We had a chance. But what happened? Gardner Minshew came to play and fumbled the ball. Chiefs get the ball. Game's over. If you turn the ball over against good football teams, you will lose. And it wasn't an interception, but it was a fumble. And for how well I thought Gardner was in the beginning of this football game, none of it matters because you fumbled. So if they start Carter Bradley or Desmond Ritter next week, I don't care. Do I want to see Gardner Mitchell out there? No. Even though you played well, wasn't good enough. We lost, and you fumbled the game away. You fumbled your chance to completely flip the narrative on everything said about you. You beat the Chiefs. You play a, 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 a really bad Bengals team right now. Who knows what happens? But instead, you fumbled the game away. Gardner, you, you dealt with some bad play calling and some bad O-line play all year, but you keep turning the ball over. And at a certain point, you are what you show us that you are. And this team has shown us that they're not very good. And I think the coaching has primarily been the biggest issue for that. Because I've seen Gardner Minshew with decent coaching. And I've seen him with bad coaching. And he's been terrible. It's not, it's not his fault that Getsy's bad. It's not Getsy's fault that Minshew's bad. It's just a bad combination of bad coaching and bad football players. So, we lose another game, unfortunately. I'm not rooting for us to lose, but we have a higher chance of getting a top five pick. Like I said, patreon.com slash all aboard Raiders. I'm breaking down the quarterbacks. I did Cam Ward. You saw the sneak preview. Shador Sanders is next. Join the Discord. Link is in the description below. A lot of sad people in there. A lot of frustrated, angry people in there. Please be sure to subscribe. It is free after all. No charge to you. I love you guys. And I'll see you next time.